My mother's birthday is just around the corner, so I wanted to make her something special. Lately my parents have gotten a bit crazy about owls after one moving in next to their summer house. Therefore I wanted to make her a small brass owl. For this project I have bought this black wax which will be sculpted into something resembling an owl. Until now I haven't been doing much sculpting so this is very new for me and what you see here is me working on my second attempt ever. Later in this video you will see my first attempt. Next I form a thick wax sprue which I will be attaching to the bottom of the owl. This will be where the molten brass will be poured into. The wax figure needs to be embedded into investment, a special type of plaster which can handle the high temperatures used when burning out the wax. Cold water in the investment is carefully measured according to instructions found on the investment packaging. For this specific type of investment, 700 ml of water is needed per kilogram of dry investment powder. I've made this little piece of wood to be mounted to the sprue using a screw so it can be placed on the mold like this. Now it's time to add the investment to the water and we should get something with a consistency like pancake batter. As this is the first time I'm doing this, it takes some getting used to this process and getting everything done in time. It's a great help being two persons doing this as the investment starts setting and solidifying rather quickly, especially when also trying to film the process at the same time. Ideally the investment should be vacuumed to remove any air bubbles before continuing, but we do not have any vacuum pump or vacuum chamber for doing this. So fingers are crossed for not getting too many bubbles sitting on the surface of the wax model. While filling the mold it started to leak, so some emergency duct tape came in handy. The wax really likes to float on top, so metal weight is placed to keep it down. Two hours later the investment has completely solidified and can be opened up. I use a sharp blade to cut away any excess plaster and wax at the sprue opening, so it does not enter the mold during the burnout process. Now we can place a fireproof dish in the electrical kiln and then place the molds upside down. And as you can see, we are doing two molds today to increase the odds of a success. Here you see the burnout cycle based on a white paper by Formlabs, which I'll link to in the description. The graph shows how the temperature of the kiln is ramped up during a 10 hour schedule. First the temperature is raised to just under 200 degrees during a 2 hour ramp. This is to slowly start milling the wax 
and let the investment dry slowly as it still contains a lot of water. After an hour at this temperature, the main ramp starts, slowly climbing the temperature to 730 degrees Celsius. At this high temperature, the actual burnout happens, and the goal is to have the mold completely dry and all the wax removed. Finally, the temperature can be lowered to the desired casting temperature of the mold, which depends on the specific metal alloy to be casted. Normally, you should not be checking the casting during the burnout process, as this will cause big drops in the temperature, which can stress the mold thermally. But for the sake of this video, we'll take a look an hour into the burnout cycle, where the wax has started to soften, but not yet completely melt. Three hours into the cycle, just before the main ramp, most of the wax has melted and run into the fireproof dish. The dish is removed and the two molds can now be placed back into the kiln, right side up. As the kiln reaches the top temperature of 700 degrees Celsius, it glows red hot and the wax has started burning, which causes the temperature to actually rise even more. And I'm still in the process of figuring out whether this is okay and how much air with fresh oxygen should be provided to assist the carbonization of the wax. I was quite disheartened when checking the molds after the burnout cycle has finished. They both had cracked severely and I thought they both had failed. But I decided to continue with the help of my trusty friend, Mort Duct Tape. To support both molds further, they were surrounded by some casting sand in a metal bucket. And in the meantime, Sebastian had prepared a good portion of molten brass, which had a lot of oxidized zinc floating on top. This is easily skimmed off just before casting. Even though the cracks were not what I had hoped for, they do look quite nice. After 15 minutes of cooling, the molds can be dunked into water to dissolve the investment and further cool the metal. Now it's a moment of truth, and we'll see whether we have a bird or a disaster. Despite the severely cracked moles, we got two lovely brass birds, which is up for a good cleaning job. First the sprue is cut off with a metal saw. Then the ankle grinder helps shaving off some more material. And to get the last pieces of investment stuck in all the small crevices, both birds are put into a bath of water and acetic acid overnight. I don't believe this is the most ideal approach and I would like to use an ultrasonic cleaner if I had one. But in the end, this seemed to work okay, and I now got this cool owl with its chubby brother. Let me know in the comments which one you like the most. Now it's just a matter of wrapping up the one I like the most and give it to my mother for her birthday. Thanks for watching and see you soon.